I mentioned to you the Jaipur leg, which is people who already have lost their legs. They need a prosthetic limb to walk normally. And uh, the Jaipur uh, foot people, they make it for about uh, uh, 3,000 rupees. 2,000, 3,000 rupees. But they give it free of cost to the end users because they, have, they keep on getting donations. So you can donate saying that, I'll donate 3,000 rupees to give a free leg to some needy patient. So they do that all the time. So patient, it is free, but of course someone has to bear the cost and the cost is about 3,000 rupees. The problem is, if there's a poor patient in some remote village, the patient has to come twice to Jaipur. Once to give measurements of the stump, people will take measurements and they actually put a plaster of Paris to make a mold of the stem, so they create a replica of the stem, plaster of Paris, and on the stump they will fabricate the a fitting processes because your stump has to go into the processes. Okay. So the whole thing is very involved process, not very happy process, uncomfortable in rainy season. The plaster Paris takes a lot of time to dry. Okay. And if you if the thing is not finished by the end of the day, you have to go back or stay in a metro village, which villages don't want to stay in a Bombay and Jaipur kind of places. They are very afraid of the things. Also very expensive. In fact, the people who are trying to serve, they don't have money even to pay for the bus ticket to come. Free leg is free leg. But they don't have money to pay for the bus ticket. They are that poor. So many times these people go to the villages and do camps, measurement, then again come back, again make the process, again go back and then fit it. So it's like very inefficient process. So what we did was we started doing something interesting. We brought in parametric CAD and then we brought in 3D printing. We brought in CNC milling later on. Okay. And then we brought in a, 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 a knee joint. Because Jaipur leg is like a rigid leg. You just walk like this. For sitting, what it is, you unhook the whole thing, it just, and you can sit. It just dangles. You cannot walk normally with that. So what you've done is you put a proper knee joint, which is now, makes you walk very naturally. So the moment you lift the leg, it automatically falls back. The knee joint is designed so beautifully and designed by IIT Madras. So we are not reinventing the wheel. Someone has already invented a knee joint and they were looking for someone to fit it into the Jaipur leg. So best of both worlds. Okay, and he's able to cross the roads, so he can climb the stairs, all kinds of things. And now this is, um, we have improved it further. This is the first, very first version which we have made. Now we have, I think we are given to about 15 patients now. Recently we did a study with all cameras in the room to see whether how well they are walking, energy efficiency. So we found that uh, our process, the whole thing, uh, reduces the energy um, compared to Jaipur leg by 30%. And with the knee joint, we expect it to come down to very natural to the natural human. Uh, gate, what is called as. Okay. So these are other pictures of other uh, devices. I showed you the picture of so many devices. But these are all happy pictures for us. Uh, most pictures have a doctor and an engineer and some have even a patient. So you'll find one picture which is the middle one for example. That is a baby. Babies who have club foot. You have a unique device to straighten the legs. And they have to be put right when the baby is born. But within a year or so the legs can be straightened because baby's bones are still very soft. So bones will naturally become correct. But they found that the current device in the market had 75% failures, which means the baby's correction was not happening. So we found the reasons for that. We fixed it by some changes in the device, modifications to that. And now the correction is 100%. The other thing is, if you want, you can have this. This is a book of stories of all these things. About 16 stories which have happened in our lab. And, I'm at, and I usually tell them, these are all not IIT Bombay students, by the way. There are people from all over the country, from remote areas, from Bhuneshwar, from Dehradun, from somewhere near in Mangalore. They have come from all over the country through hackathons and those five-day camps. And today, Betik is not just in IIT Bombay. We now have 11 centers of Betik uh, across Maharashtra in engineering colleges, in medical colleges, where each of the local colleges brings the local doctors, engineers, entrepreneurs, investors together. And we are trying to create a wave of of indigenous affordable medical device innovation. What is it that takes to be successful in life? And I was searching for answers in religious books, in talking to Americans and Europeans and Japanese and Koreans and Taiwanese. <coughs> After a lot of research, I just reduced it to one's life. So maybe it is interesting to you. I finally found that there are four things that you have to look at. One is you have to find, and you are at an age that I would like to tell you, because if you find this early in life, I think you are done. Find out what you really love to do. Find out what you are good at doing. And, and the thing tells you, how do you know? If you love to do something, you will be cheerful all the time. If you are good at doing something, you feel confident of doing something like that. 
okay if you are paid for of course you can buy your house and car and whatever it is you can be comfortable in life okay and then if you do something what the world needs you can be content okay that is what the thing is how do you know the things and let me do intersections of the whole thing one by one so if you love to do something and you're good at doing something like let us say hockey player i call it as passion okay if you are good at doing something which means your degree is in that if you are mechanical engineer your degree is in that you are supposed to be good at mechanical engineering so what you are good at and what can you paid for if you intersect that you get what is called as profession let's say a bank officer who has done his uh, mcom and ca and all those things if you intersect the these two the same bank officer supposing after his office is over he goes to the street kids and teaches them mathematics and the street kids pay them 50 50 rupees each it's not a great amount of money but they're paying him because he's doing something valuable to them that is what is called as vocation okay and if you can intersect the last two that becomes a mission world needs and you love to do that it's a mission you don't worry about whether you're good at it or whether you are can paid it and things like that what i am trying to tell you is if you can find something which intersects all of them then you are found nirvana in life <laughs> the earlier you find in life the better it is for you